Upon the floor some torn up t-shirts lay That I have not the heart to throw away But I know You always take the madness when you go A queen is born for us a long weekend A message left by our well-meaning friend Well-meaning friend They pick me up for quiet drives around the bend And round a The books that you had left for me Will keep me in good company The boxes that your things are in Will stay where they have always been The light will make the shapes to crawl On afternoons across the wall And nothing here will change at all Until you find your way back to me again You always are the one who most abhors Me and my tendency for the indoors But I know You always take the madness when you go So bring it home The books that you had left for me Will keep me in good company The boxes that your things are in Will stay where they have always been The light will make the shapes to crawl On afternoons across the wall And nothing here will change at all until the clock still turns the house around It heats it up and cools it down The grass will still be on the ground Until you find your way back to me again
Hi everyone, this is Darren Hanlon. We're at Northcote Town Hall. Hello. And uh, amateur, amateur TV, right? Amateur hour. Amateur amateur hour. Yeah. And yeah, you're going to express yourself musically through oh, yeah, this yeah. interview. Yeah. Feeling gentle. Mm. Cool. Feeling very relaxed. Nice. Um. So yeah, I've seen you through hard times <laughs> and good times. Dad. What have you been doing lately? Oh, uh, Are you writing a book? I'm trying to. Is that an autobiography? Yeah. Oh yeah, don't forget about expressing your feelings. <laughs> yeah, um, it's an autobiographical story about the um, the last album, the making of the last album. Oh. Yeah, it was, um, the story wrote itself and the album wrote itself. I had no plans for the album. I just went to the States because I really, I've been really getting interested in folk music and blues music, the, the, you know, the 20s, the stuff when it was, when they started recording it. It was mainly in Mississippi where the field recorders were, where the people were that would actually put this stuff to tape. Yeah. So um, there's still all these sacred sites of folk music and blues music. They're shells now, but you can still see where it all happened. Wow. It's quite exciting. Did you yeah. do field recordings for it? I did one field recording. Um, I met these um, kids in New Orleans that tap dance, cutting the, co the tops off Coke cans, and oh, they'll yeah? nail them to their Nikes. And I was fascinated by it, so I said, would you be interested in um, letting me record you for the album? And they're like, yeah, sure. I couldn't understand anything they said. Their accents were so thick. This one kid, he turned out to be 16, mm. and I rang the number that he gave me, and it was his mum. And she said, oh, Cara Chance, he's in school. And there was this mad chase around New Orleans. I'm, I'm in this car, like, trying to find his school bus somewhere. <laughs> and he's calling me, and I can't understand. And I finally track him down, and he gets off the bus with his two friends. And he's got no Coke cans. And we're like, ah, oh, we've only got, <laughs> we don't have long, because I have to get to a gig in Jackson, Mississippi. So um, we're going through bins, and we find the cans, but there's no nails. So um, I see a construction site, so I run to this construction site. There's some workers on the roof, throw me some nails. And they're like, what? <laughs> so they threw some nails and I wrote like a rap um, song and, and, and sing it over the top of, of this guy tap dancing. Oh my dancing. God. Yeah. So that was kind of the closest I came to field recording myself. That's awesome. That's the, that's, that's. That's the story. Well, that's not even. Sorry. That's not even, no, have a go. That's okay. It's all right. Okay. Play your feelings. Laura's feeling relaxed and a little bit soulful. Thanks for coming in, Darren. No um, worries. That was fun to play. Was that Tears in Heaven? Yes. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll cut, but I uh, enjoyed talking to you. I hope you had fun. That was great. So the Hard Ons, my fabulous band, went on tour one year to Scandinavia and we played a small college town. It's called Urubur. It's got those funny little marks over the capital O and stuff. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but we played it several times and the gigs are always really good. But um, after the show, I went backstage and I saw our drummer Kesh, who's Sri Lankan, by the way. He's Captain Midnight. I saw him arm in arm with two neo-Nazi skinheads. And Kesh, our drummer, says to me, 
Ray, I'm glad you're here. Can you get my camera and take photos of me with these two boys? I'm there going, what the fuck for? Why are you arm in arm with these two fucking Nazis? He says to me, they really enjoy the gig. They think we're really great. They're really nice, friendly guys. I mean, they're, they're not from this town, but they're studying here. And Or well, they're going to university. What are they studying there, Kesh? She is. Let's just kick them out. Let's get rid of these fucking Nazis from the dressing room. He says, don't be judgmental, Ray. No one's perfect. They really like the band. I go, they're neo-Nazis for fuck's sake. So I walk out and what do I see? My guitar player, Blackie, talking very intimately with a skinhead woman. And I can see the swastikas again, the tartan skirt, the kicking boots, the haircut with the awning, you name it. You know, the word hate across the knuckles. I, this is a Nazi fascist woman. And so I get his attention like, Blackie, fucking get over here, I need to talk to you. I go, you are making intimate conversation with a Nazi woman. He says, yeah, I think I'm going to take her back to the hotel. And I, and I say to him, hey, um, excuse me, your drummer is Sri Lankan and your bass player is Korean and you're going to go off with a Nazi woman. He says, listen, mate, I haven't been late in days. I need to get covered in mayonnaise. And I said, you're going to fuck a Nazi woman. He says, for God's sake, Ray, nobody's perfect. Look, a lot of people make cakes to recipes, which is great, and that's amazing because they always taste like they're from a shop. But sometimes you just want to make a cake and you don't want to have to look up a recipe. I never use recipes, I just estimate. some flour here. I'm just going to pour it in so there's, you know, there's a good, there's, you know, that much in there. Maybe a bit more. I've got this other flour here as well. It's self-raising. I don't know the self-raising versus whatever, who knows what it does. I certainly don't. If you want to just look in what's, what spices you've got. So I've got some some whole nutmegs, I've got some star anise. What else have I got in here? Cloves, I've got some cinnamon. So what you would do is, if you can be bothered, you would put, I'm not gonna put this on the ironing board because it's gonna break, but you'd put all these spices, whole spices in the mortar and pestle, just grind them up, and um, chuck them in with your dry ingredients. So today I think I will use coconut oil. Yeah. <laughs> that looks nice. Mm. Okay. And then bananas are really good for making improvised cakes because bananas just hold everything together. I would use a couple of bananas for this unspecified amount of flour. Doesn't matter, we'll just go with the flow. Um, 
So we smash that all up. I'm just going to use an egg. Eggs are gross. We all know that. They're disgusting. I don't know why we eat them and why we think it's okay to eat them because they come out of a chicken and it's all very strange but we just ignore that and we eat them anyway. Um, um, I like to mix things with my hands. It's gross. I'm sorry. So basically when it's like that you know you can just chuck it in the tin. I'm going to grease it with some coconut oil. You can see that I've still got this gross hand. That's okay. I'll use my other hand. Again using my hands. <laughs> and I'll just grease that around. I feel like a three year old. You might want to sprinkle some shit on the top. I might put some walnuts on here. So, I'm just going to crumble them up in my hands. Put it on there. And you can put it in the oven. The way you know a cake's ready, it smells. It just starts smelling good. Then you just tap it on the top. It should like not cave in. And, or you just put a fork in there and if it comes out clean, it's ready. You've got to take it out straight away. I have prepared one earlier. Oh God, it's so hard. It's fudge cake. Let me just have a try. Mmm, it needs to be warmed up. <laughs> I was always in like the school play, always in the school musical, never the lead, always in the background, furious. I didn't get to play a lead until The Scarecrow in Year 12 in The Wizard of Oz, which I killed at. So I grew up in Melbourne, I, I studied in Ballarat and then I came back. Uh, I read about an audition for a comedy show and that's how I met Declan Green. After we did that, it was like, we should make shows together. And we started Sisters Grimm. I'm a widower actually. I lost my wife a few years ago. With a big C. She drowned. <laughs> Cancer. <laughs> Taurus. <laughs> so then when we got an opportunity to work with Sydney Theatre Company, that was the first time that we were like, okay, so what happens if we actually try and cross a sort of boundary with our audience. When I write my own solo work, it's kind of influenced by social critics that I find entertaining, people like Sandra Bernhardt or Fran Lieberwitz, usually angry Jewish lesbians. The older audiences, they don't give a shit. The more you get in front of a main stage audience, they're really primed to laugh at anything. Someone could make a fart noise and a wealthy Turak woman will find that the most hilarious thing she's ever heard in her life. They just want to hear filth. And I'm really happy to give that to them. So one of the craziest things that's happened in the last few years is that I got asked by an artist if she could paint me for the Archibald. And it was amazing. She brought dresses, I brought dresses, because obviously it was going to be about the kind of work I do mid-gender. And I ended up wearing one of her dresses and it was kind of like fucking one of the best times I've ever had in my life. Yeah, the green room thing is funny. Like last year I won one for our show Sovereign Wife and I wasn't even there to collect it. I was overseas, which is a boss killer move and I'm thrilled that I was. But, you know, I hope this year I can actually go to the ceremony even if we lose, which I assume we will. But awards in art are really silly and I get why they exist, but it's like, this isn't the Olympics and we're not curing cancer. I'm in a dress telling dick jokes and the idea that someone else can be in a dress and tell a better dick joke than me, A, doubt it, and B, says who? Says who that this art is better than that art? You know, the art of wearing a dress and telling a dick joke is just full of multiplicities and dualities. You can't narrow it down. It's a dense art form. Choose your last word. Turned the lounge.
arms chairs into a bed Laura we are getting divorced I asked them the meaning of the word I went outside and sat on my swing I remember the grass I remember the wind I looked out over Brisbane water And wondered how I could be a better daughter A tree On a hill Standing So still Waiting for a cow to make use um, of my bow. Sorry, um, does anyone know this guy? Oh, we're just having a little concert. I don't know if you're. I'm not sure what we should do. Should I keep playing? Um, Anyway, um, I think I might just have a little break and we'll, we'll try and sort this out, so. Okay. Sarah, how are you going? Hi, good, thanks. How are you? Good. You look very relaxed. I'm feeling there. fine. I'm not as comfortable as I look though. Right. <laughs> it's not fun lying on a big piece of wood, but it's yeah. A shiny um, piece. Shiny, yes. <laughs> uh, Sarah has, has come in to play for us and you've come down from Sydney. What are you doing? Um, I'm playing at the Melbourne Zoo. Cool. Tomorrow. Have you yeah. played in a zoo before? No, no I haven't. I've, you... I've sung in a zoo just as I've walked. <laughs> through the zoo, but no, I haven't. No. Hi, giraffe! Yeah. <laughs> I like to spontaneously burst into song, I think. It makes life, you know, a richer experience. Yeah. <laughs> do you like musicals? I do. Yeah. yeah. Do you? I do. Yeah. Annie's my favourite. Oh, is it? Did yeah. you see I the movie? Tattoo of Annie there. <laughs> Show you, you guys later. Um, did you see the new Annie? No, I refuse. It looks terrible. Yeah, no, Cameron Diaz have. just... What's, what part's Cameron Diaz playing? Miss Hannigan. Ah. No, yeah, that's you not can't right. replace I thought Rose Carol Byrne Burnett. might be playing. Oh, no, wait a minute. No. No, Miss Hannigan. Okay, sorry, I'm getting the characters. <laughs> Annie's not my favourite musical. I'm just going to put that out. Oh, okay, there. what's yours? Um, well, my, my favourite sort of classic one is probably Sound of Music. Uh huh. But I really like Cabaret and West Side Story. Oh, yeah. 
My friend was in, in Gypsy. Um, he gives someone a present and then he says, I should have wrapped them. But that's how he said it. Right. So <laughs> my strongest memory from that is just, I should have wrapped them. Mm. Okay. Uh, do you have aspirations to be in a musical? Could you do that? I think I would not that secretly love to be in one. Yeah. Not that secretly? No, except I can't dance. So I think that that would probably be bad. You could be Roosevelt in any. He was wheelchair bound. So. Oh, okay, right. That'd be perfect for me. Does he sing though? In he doesn't. He does. Oh, he does in the. He just does a shit version of um, Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Like they right. do a, a reprise. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you, you think it's reprise it or reprise? It's probably reprise because I I've often been saying reprise it. and then I started to think it was wrong, so I started saying reprise again. Anyway, just let's a take a poll <laughs> and. Um, consolidate the results and sure. let each other know. Okay. okay. Because what was, yeah, there was another word that you, I think we had an affinity oh, with. Oh, nectarin. Yes. Yeah. I think it's nectarin And as cicada. Well. I think it's cicada. What yeah. people say cicada. In, in Victoria they do. That's weird. Yeah. And they say nectarine as well. I, I still think that's wrong, but everybody seems to think that it's nectarine, which... Yeah. I find, which, quite frankly, a little bit disturbing that the well, world is... Well, it's upsetting is. <laughs> when everyone else is wrong and you're right. Yeah, it is, which sort I of... I feel like that a lot of the time. Does it happen to you a lot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be a little... It's yeah, kind of sad, isn't disappointing, it? Disappointing, yeah. <laughs> On that yeah. note, yeah. have a great day. Thank you. The you only too. way is up. Just keep pronouncing things the way that you want to pronounce them sure. and everything will be fine. I was heading straight for a destiny. 